Hello humans. Yesterday I did a video talking about what Dogen did not do with koans, which led a few people to ask me what did Dogen do with the koans. Obviously Dogen was a big fan of koans. One of the books that he put together was called Shinji Shobogenzo. Here's my teacher Gudo Nishijima's translation. This one is available through the store on hardcorezen.info, by the way, if you want to get it. It's a collection that Dogen put together when he was leaving China. In those days, you couldn't photocopy anything, and you couldn't go to a Barnes & Noble and buy the book if you wanted it. So how he got the koan collection was that he sat up all night, apparently, copying them on his last night in China. And uh, Shinji Shobo Genzo is, is uh, supposedly the result of that. If you want to know what Dogen did with the koans, the easiest way to find out is to pick up any book written by Dogen and read it. This is kind of a recurring theme in Zen, which is that people often spend a lot of time, effort, and energy looking for hidden meanings and hidden truths and hidden stuff when the actual thing they're looking for is right in front of their faces. And this is kind of Dogen's lesson again and again throughout Shobo Genzo. What I said last time was that Dogen didn't assign phrases from koans to his students for them to contact contemplate during Zazen and then answer for him. Now, of course, we don't know. We don't have time machines. We can't go back. It's entirely possible that he did do this and he just never wrote it down. You know, it, it, but it's also entirely possible that Dogen was a time traveler from the future who came to Earth from the planet Regisvan and uh, manipulated time and space to make a great book. But these speculations don't really lead anywhere. When you want to know what really went on, just go to the source and look at it. It's kind of similar to the contention that Dogen taught reincarnation. You, you look for obscure phrases and pieces that imply something while ignoring the overt places where Dogen states directly what he thinks about it. And whenever he states directly what he thinks about so-called koan introspection, it's always negative. Whenever he states directly what he thinks about reincarnation, it's always negative. But you can dig, you know, through bits and pieces and go, well, he also said this, so maybe I don't go for that. I've written three books on what I believe Dogen did with the koans. The first one is Sit Down and Shut Up. The second one is Don't Be a Jerk. And the third is my latest book, It Came From Beyond Zen. I'm not really taken very seriously in the world of Dogen scholarship, and that's understandable because you look at the covers of my books and they, they kind of look goofy. But I actually do take this pretty seriously, and one of the things I find kind of depressing is that there are people out there who are older than me and far more respected than me in the world of Dogen scholarship, in the world of Buddhism in general, and they're always going to be much more believed than I am. But the the sad thing I find is I look at the things that a lot of these guys write and I go, they don't even know as much about Dogen as I do, and, and I'm a guy who likes this shit. You know, this, this is, I think, a sad commentary on the state of Buddhism in the West today, or Buddhism anywhere, is that I, the, the guy who likes Attack of the 50-Foot Woman and Queen of Outer Space and Giant Behemoth, is the one who knows about Dogen, whereas the respected scholars who who get all the press uh, don't know what they're talking about when it comes to it. And to be fair, there are a lot of really good Dogen scholars out there. I particularly like Stephen Hine. Carl Bielefeld. One of the best ways to see what Dogen actually did with koans is covered in this book. It came from Beyond Zen, not to toot my own horn, but if there was a better book about it, maybe I could toot that one. Get on your sticks, people. In this book, I took a look at two essays Dogen wrote in Shobo Genzo, one called Shinjin Inga, Deep Beliefs and Cause and Effect, and another called Daishugyo, Great Practice. 
in both of these essays, he looks at a koan called Hyakujo's Fox. It's kind of a weird story about this wild fox who claims to be the reincarnation of a great Zen master and the things that the wild fox slash Zen master says and what he does and so forth. In both essays, Dogen takes a phrase within the koan, which is deep belief in cause and effect and analyzes what that means. So in a way, he is taking a phrase from a koan and seeing what he can get out of it. But he's not trying to display his intellectual prowess or impress his teacher with it. He's trying to say what he feels the koan means to him. And, and I think that's what you do with the koans. They're strange little stories, and they indicate a kind of logic that we're not used to. If you can read enough of them and kind of get into the flow of it, you can pick up on this interesting alternate form of logic. It's not an alternative fact, but it's an alternate kind of logic, a different way of looking at logic. So that's what Dogen did with the koans. I know I didn't tell you much except go read what he said, but I think that's the best way to figure out what Dogen did with the koans is just to read for yourself what he did with them. And if you don't like my books about it, there's tons of others. One I can recommend if you're into scholarly stuff is Stephen Hines, Dogen and the Koan Tradition. That's a real good one about that. So thanks for listening. I make my living by doing these videos and reading these books and trying to explain them to people. And the only way that works is if you donate. So I've put links below on how to donate through Patreon or through PayPal. So thanks for listening. Have a nice day.